The first thing that we're going to talk about today is side rail silliness. So if you open up your skills books, the spiral books, to page 94, this is what we're going to be talking about. It's on page 94 and 95. So you can follow along your skills book. But this is a, a topic that gets really confusing for students um, because of things that you have seen in the past. And the, the biggest thing that I have to get across to you is that everything that you've seen isn't necessarily done correctly. So I need you to kind of forget everything that you think you know about side rails um, as we go through this lecture, because chances are what you think you know about side rails is probably wrong. Okay, um, and that's that's the biggest challenge for uh, students coming into the program. If they've got any prior knowledge or training or experience, or they worked in healthcare, um, some of the things that they had learned before have changed. So um, we've got to discuss those changes. So if you remember, we talked about positioning rails uh, last week. The bed controls are on those top rails or half rails at the top of the bed in a clinical setting, um, acute care clinical setting like hospital or rehab. Now, older facilities, uh, nursing homes, convalescent centers and such may have beds more like what you see there. Now, those aren't going to have the same half rails. The rails that you would see on that bed would be full length metal bar type rails. They would go all along the full length of the bed. And those are older style beds, but they're still being used in a lot of places. So in acute care settings like hospitals and rehabs, same day surgery centers, you would have more modern beds like the one that you see right here. Why is that different? Well, because we need to understand that bed rails are called different things in different places. So we have to understand the terminology first, and then we have to understand how that applies to state law. So in an acute care setting, you've got rails on both the top and the bottom half of the bed. So if you, uh, I back this up a little bit, you can see our top rails there. And if I move the camera a little bit, you'll see that there are bottom rails here. Okay, so top rails or positioning rails, bottom rails. Now, when you put these bottom rails up, it prevents the patient from being able to get out of bed um, effectively. So what we've done is created a barrier for them to get over or under or around or through. So if this person that's in this bed wants to get out of bed for whatever reason, maybe they just wanna stretch their legs, maybe they wanna to go to the bathroom, maybe they wanna go sit in the chair, but if they want to get out of this bed, there's really no place for them to do it safely. They would have to try to get through this little opening here or scoot all the way to the end and get out of this little opening here. But what we've done here is created an obstacle for them to overcome. So a lot of times we think, well, we need side rails to keep the patient safe. But in reality, if we're creating an obstacle with those side rails, we're really not keeping that patient safe at all. And we need to keep that in mind that side rails do not improve safety and they don't improve safety outcomes either. And I'm gonna get into that in just a few minutes. But a lot of times staff members like nurses or CNAs think to themselves, well, I don't want that patient up walking around because they're a fall risk. Yeah, you know, they're at risk of falling. And I understand that mindset, I do. But there's a huge problem with using side rails to keep the patient in bed because you don't want them wandering around because they're a fall risk. In that scenario, you really are not thinking about the patient, you're thinking about yourself. Okay, so if you don't want the patient walking around because they're a fall risk, what you're saying is, I don't want to get in trouble if my patient falls, so I'm going to keep them from falling by keeping them from moving. So what, what you've done is put the focus back on you, not the patient. 
and I know your argument, you're going to say, no, that's not right. I don't want them to get hurt. I don't want them to fall, but that's not really your motivation. Because if you were truly concerned about that patient's weakness, okay, or if you were truly concerned that they were a fall risk, you would be taking measures to improve their strength and their mobility. So putting a patient into a bed and putting side rails up for days at a time is not doing anything to strengthen them. In fact, what you're doing is making them even more weak. Does that make sense? Yeah. So imagine for a second that we have an older person who gets COVID, okay? This person is in their 70s and they feel absolutely rotten. And we, we know that they have oxygenation issues, their lungs are filled up with fluid, we have them in the hospital, we're keeping a close eye on them, we're doing vital signs every four hours, we're turning them on their stomach to help with postural drainage, we're doing all the right things. But we put the side rails up because we don't want that person out of bed wandering around on their own. What do you think they're going to be like at the end of a week of being stuck in bed without moving at all other than you know flipping onto their stomach now and then if somebody isn't getting out of bed isn't getting upright isn't moving isn't walking isn't uh you know engaging in any type of exercise that person is progressively going to get weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker and this is not good for your immune system, it's not good for your digestion, and believe it or not, it's not good for your respiration either, because as we lay around not doing anything, that can cause the secretions in our lungs to actually harden. Now, this patient is weak. We're not going to ask them to walk around on their own. A staff member needs to be with them, but using side rails to keep them in bed is not an effective strategy. And let me explain uh, why I mean that. How many of you guys have ever um, had a two-year-old, like if you've had children, have you ever had somebody about a year and a half, two years old, or have you ever babysat somebody that's like a year and a half to two years old, right? So when you've got a child that's about a year and a half, they start climbing out of their crib. Now, we know that a year and a half year year old doesn't have any safety awareness so they climb to the top of the crib rail they flip over and then they're going to fall to the floor and that's a long drop kids bounce pretty well they're pretty um resilient so but after the child does that once or twice you realize okay the crib's not going to work anymore we got to take the baby out of the crib and put him in a toddler bed right so this is a little bed close to the floor you probably put soft stuff onto the floor so if they roll out, they don't injure themselves. But we realize very quickly that once that person develops the ability, once that child develops the ability to climb over the side rails, it's no longer safe for them because what we've done is made the fall a whole lot further. So what we want to do is put them in a bed that allows them to learn how to sleep within that bed because this is something we're going to do for the rest of our lives is sleep in a bed so we don't um we don't keep them in that crib and put netting over it to keep them in place or you know smack them when they try to, to climb out this is a natural normal progression well if your one and a half year old self didn't like to be confined in a crib do you really think your 60 or 70 year old self is going to be okay being confined in a crib when you have had total and complete independence since you were one and a half years old do you really think that your body or your mind is going to let that happen no so when you've got a patient in this bed and we tell that patient hey don't get out of bed because you're weak and i don't want you to fall and this patient hits the call light because they have to go to the bathroom and they have heard you you said don't get out of bed they hit the call light and they wait and they wait and they wait and they keep waiting and nobody comes they hit the call light again finally somebody calls in and says can I help you and they say yeah I have to go to the bathroom and the um, desk clerk says I'll get somebody to, to come in and they wait and they wait 
and 30 minutes later, they still have to go to the bathroom and they're still waiting. Do you really think that those side rails are going to stop them from getting out of bed if they have to go? Their only choices are to climb over the side rails or pee on themselves. Those are their two choices. Now, out of the two, that, that's a dignity issue, guys. Out of the two, almost every person will opt to try to climb over those side rails to get to the bathroom by themselves. Those side rails did not stop your patient. What they did was create an obstacle for that patient to get over. Now, remember, if they've been in bed, they're already weak. So, you know, climbing over those side rails, chances are they're probably going to fall because they don't have the muscle strength or the agility to be able to maneuver around an obstacle. So putting patients in bed and putting the side rails up to keep them in place doesn't work once somebody is over a year and a half old. All it does is provide an obstacle for that person to have to get around. Side rails kill thousands of people every year. People die because they get trapped between the side rails when they try to get out. Or they die because they fall out of bed from a higher level over the side rails. Or they become injured through the side rail itself as they try to climb out. Side rails kill people. They do not keep people safe. More importantly, they don't do anything to improve the patient's situation. So we need to understand that if we have a tool that makes it more likely for the patient to get injured and less likely for the patient to get better, is that a good tool to use in medicine? So as a CNA, we never have to look at that patient over there and think, okay, well, you're weak. I need to put side rails up to keep you in bed. That's not our call. And believe it or not, it's not even the nurse's call to make that decision. Now, the reason for that is a little bit more sad, really, because over years, they have found many, many healthcare providers, nurses, CNAs, um, and other long-term care providers that felt it would be easier in their work environment if their patients were confined to bed. So these unscrupulous, horrible healthcare providers would drug their patients, put them in bed with the side rails up. And the patients wouldn't get good care. Sometimes our coworkers may be more interested in working in their own self-interest. So because of this, because we can't really trust that people in long-term care are really getting truly good care, they took this decision out of the hands of the nurses. And now in order to use side rails on the patient's bed, we have to get a doctor's order. So what this did is it shifted nursing um, behavior from defaulting to side rails, okay? Everybody gets side rails. We're afraid that you guys are all gonna fall. We don't wanna do the paperwork. We're just gonna put everybody in bed and put the side rails up. It shifted from that mentality over to what can we do to keep these residents safe right? We don't want them to fall while increasing their mobility. So what are some things that we can do to help prevent a further degradation in their um, care, in their level of care? So it shifted the mindset. So instead of just defaulting straight to side rails because we're afraid this person's going to fall if they're up walking around, what we did was create bed alarms. So there's no side rails, but when the patient gets up out of bed, an alarm goes off that lets us know, hey, somebody's up moving around, somebody needs to go check on that person to make sure they're safe. We also have beds that go super low to the ground and have a pad that we put on the floor. It sounds a whole lot like the toddler beds when we were younger. So it still gives freedom of movement, 
while still maintaining a certain level of safety. And those low beds may be used for some patients in some settings. Sometimes we'll use one-on-one uh, -on -one care or sitters, which is a staff member that's assigned to sit at that patient's bed. And any time the patient wants to get up, that staff member is assigned to help them or to at least relay that information on to another staff member that can help them. Sometimes the patients get restless. I want you to think about yourself for a second. Have you ever in your life been sleeping and woken up in the middle of the night, two, three, four, and you just couldn't sleep? So maybe you got up and went out to the couch or you got up and went to the refrigerator to get a drink or you got up to go to the bathroom. There is nobody in your life that is standing at that door making you get back into bed when you don't want to when you've got something that you need to do as an adult, right? You have the ability to roam at will. Now, at what age are you willing to give up that ability, that right? At what age are you willing to let somebody come along and tell you that you cannot get out of bed? That is correct, never, no age. That's right. So if we don't want it for us, then why in the world as healthcare workers do we think that we have the right to do that to this person. Mm. So here's the thing, if you don't want that to happen to you, and remember, you are only this many years away from being old, right? Whatever that number is, you are only that many years away. Everybody, you know, everybody is going to get to old age at some point, or the alternative is way worse, right? You don't make it to old age, that's even worse, but everybody gets to old age at some point. And if you don't want somebody trampling on your rights, we've gotta be careful not to let that happen now. So when it comes to side rails, we need to understand that we can't use them routinely, that if we have anything that blocks the patient's ability to freely get out of bed, it is considered a restraint and restraints never do anything to make the patient stronger. It will always make the patient weaker. So we have to have very well-defined rules on when we can and cannot use side rails, and they are never, ever, ever to be used for staff convenience. So we have to kind of rethink our, our idea of side rails. Now, in a long-term care setting, you'll have the great big long metal rods that are side rails, they're, they're long bars that are stacked one on top of each other. Those, for the most part, you won't even see in a facility. They're not even on the beds, not even installed, because in order to use them, we have to have that doctor's order. So we have to get the doctor's order to even have them installed, because otherwise, people will take advantage of it. Now, in a hospital, we have those two rails. We have the top rail, which is a positioning rail, but that one doesn't really affect the patient's ability to get out of bed, because it's only at the top of the bed. And when we get out, we get out at the bottom of the bed. So that bottom rail, those are considered side rails. So if you have the top rail up, that's perfectly okay because that has the bed control on it and it allows the patient to position themselves because it has those handholds, allows them to use that rail to position themselves in bed if they need some help turning over. But the bottom rails, those you have to have a doctor's order to use because it restricts the patient's ability to get out of bed. Now, there is one exception to this though. If the bed is in motion, okay? So if we are pushing this bed down the hallway with a patient in it, if there's a patient in the bed and it's in motion, then the side rail should be up to help prevent legs from falling off and getting pinched between the bed and the wall or caught in an elevator door or something like that. And it keeps the arms. So it's kind of like, um, a safety bar and a roller coaster, right? It keeps all arms and legs inside the car at all times. So when you have a hospital bed, you will, in most cases, have all side rails still on the bed, but they're not, those bottom rails are not to be used unless you have a doctor's order or 
the patient is in bed and it is in motion. Now, most places, these beds are hugely heavy. I mean, they're big, they're awkward, they don't maneuver very well. Um, so in most places, we don't use these big beds to push patients down a hallway anymore. We used to. Uh, we used to use them for everything. We would move patients all over the place in these big, clunky beds. But now, if at all possible, we try to get the patient out of bed and into a wheelchair to transport them, or we'll transfer them onto a stretcher to transport them throughout different areas of the hospital. Um, those beds are just really big, clunky, hard to control. It takes two people usually to steer them properly. It's a lot of staff resources. So you won't see that very often in a clinical setting where you're having to transport a patient using these big beds and having to have the side rails up. But I need you to remember that the only time that the side rails don't require a doctor's order is if the bed is in motion with a patient in it. So everything that you thought you knew about side rails, I just blew out of the water for you. You do not use side rails routinely. Now for the test, there won't even be side rails on the bed if you're testing with Prometric. If you're not testing with Prometric, you need to check your state's guidelines because there are, I think, 12 states that do still require side rails during the CNA exam. So your states are different. You have different laws regarding side rails. So what I just told you is for Prometric testing states. So if you're testing in Florida, Connecticut, Oklahoma, Louisiana, New York, Delaware, uh, Hawaii, Idaho, uh, if you're testing in a Prometric state, you do not even have side rails on the bed. So you will not address side rail usage at all, okay? If you're testing in any other state, check your state for your regulations regarding side rails. I do need you to understand that. <music>